What an incredible time it is to be alive. What an incredible time it is to be the church, to be the church alive and well. God is moving. God is moving. God is moving. God is moving. I want to welcome you, in fact, from any, any location. I don't even know where to begin. I don't, I, don't even want to, I don't even want to start calling out locations because I'm going to miss somebody. But I do know for a fact we've got people as far as Istanbul, Turkey, all the way to Madrid, Spain, to Milan, Italy, to Chicago and Honolulu. We've even got people joining in from New York City. God is... God is spreading and the power of what God can do when people just say yes. When they say yes, it's incredible. And it's great to have you, Vive family, across the globe. I want to take a moment just to make sure I acknowledge the way that God is working right now. And, uh, and despite the format that we have, <laughs> that we've been, what some would think, restricted to being digital, I actually think God has a plan in that. I think that God has a plan to take what man sees as a restriction and God to see as potency, that I can angle and direct everything together to get a message to the people of God. So that's what I'm praying for today. And for those that are joining us online, we want to welcome you. We want to give you a big welcome. If you're regular to online, as my wife said earlier, hey, this is just fun. The family just grew for you. But for those who are brand new to Vive Church, maybe you've been invited right now, maybe the link was shared to you and you're wondering what you're watching. Let me tell you, you have found us in a training series. We've been in a series, a series called The Art Of. And this is not just some teaching series, this is a training series. As I've been saying, we're getting agile and we're getting mobile as the church. We are, we are moving. We're a church that's on the move because God is moving. And so we've been in a series being trained and ready for what God is doing. And you know what's crazy is that Earlier this week, as we came to the revelation through really different uh, uh, things that were coming out in the media and with the government decisions around gatherings and making decisions for our gathering on how we're going to pivot and still provide a worship experience, it was fascinating as we were making those decisions that we realized that, that the sermon that we had scheduled for this Sunday... And when I say scheduled, we planned our sermon series for 2020 last year in 2019. And we planned it out. We're very planned here at Vive Church. But what we realized is what we had scheduled for this week was a sermon called The Art of Not Worrying. Now, now, if you do not believe in the Kairos timing of God, we're going to go ahead and have our prayer team pray for you that God would open your blinded eyes to know that He has, he has perfect timing in the word that He wants to deliver. And so I believe that even despite the fact that we have many, many reasons to worry right now, that's true. There's many things going on. I believe the Bible gives us really clear ways in not to worry. And that's what we're gonna look at today. So whether you're on your own, whether you're with family, whether you're in, with friends, we wanna, we wanna invite you to be participatory today. We wanna invite you to be on the chat. In fact, I wanna invite you right now, if you have a Bible, would you go ahead and open it up? If not, we're gonna provide a digital version. Let's open our Bibles to 1 Peter. And uh, in chapter five is where we're gonna land. 1 Peter chapter five. And I wanna speak from verse six specifically. It says this, this is Peter talking, Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon Him, for He cares. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to His eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a little while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To Him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen and amen. Well, as we continue in our series, The Art Of, with a sermon, The Art Of Not Worrying, I want to pray and set the platform for God to speak beyond my words, that God would bring revelation and illumination into your life today. So wherever you are, would you join me right now as we pray? God, we thank you for the word. We thank you for your power. God, we thank you for your presence. God, I pray, Lord, that things would transcend time and space right now. And that ultimately, God, as a result of our faith growing, you would be glorified more. 
Lord, that you would be proclaimed over our lives. We acknowledge you here in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said amen, 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 amen. amen. If you're standing, you can be seated. And I'm excited for what God is going to do today. Thank you, worship team. Thank you so very much. My goodness, if you are able to, would you give a hand for our worship team? Incredible. If you're hearing applause, that means you are hearing our our production teams today. We have got a slimmed down team of just our production and worship teams. Be be sure we are adhering to every guideline. We have not exceeded the limit of gatherings that has been edicted by uh, our local government. And, uh, And they're gonna be rowdy and they're planning on filling the whole room. In fact, I'm hoping that you'll be rowdy today. I'm hoping that you will extend the rowdiness, not just rowdy and worship. I'm believing by faith that you're going to be chatting back. Instead of talking back, I want you to chat back today on the chat. So make sure you get your name in there, your nickname, and uh, make sure you say positive things. Amen. (laughs) However, over the series that we're in, The Art Of, I need to give you a little catch up. Really what we've been discovering and what we're talking about when we talk about The Art Of is we're ultimately talking about how to have finesse when we walk out this thing called faith. And really what we've been learning as a community is really that beyond what we say, the way we say things really, really matters. And to that, what we have discovered is that there is really a fine art to this, this this thing called finesse. There's a skill set that's required to it. However, beyond the skill set, if we really boil down the, the idea of finesse to its simplest form, the way I would describe it is with the word balance. Balance. That finesse, in my understanding, could be really boiled down to its most elementary form as the word balance. Because truthfully, there is a tension in everything that we do. And when you figure out the balance of something, that is ultimately when you will find finesse. Even when it comes to the arena of worry and and anxiety, what is actually not very helpful, I don't know if you've realized this or not, what is not helpful when it comes to fear, anxiety, and worry is the simple advice to not worry. How many people know that is not one bit helpful at all? Hey, don't worry. I mean, that's, that's as helpful as people posting on social media to, to not have fear, but without any direction or process to switch on faith. Because honestly, how am I, how am I meant to not worry? Like, let's be real. How am I meant to not worry with really what's happening in the world right now? Processing the idea of a pandemic to, to really be in the midst of a, a national emergency, state of emergency, and add to that the pressure of parenting teenagers. I dare you to tell me not to worry. I dare you. In fact, I'm wondering if it would be okay today to maybe just step away from the coronavirus conversation just for a moment and really talk about some real pressure with you because last week my eldest daughter, Dia, got her driving permit. I mean, you want to talk about real pressure. Real pressure is when your 16-year-old daughter gets her driving permit. And, and yesterday, believe it or not, we went for our first driving lesson. Our first lesson, in the rain, might, might I add. And, uh, you know, you can't always pick the right timing, but you just move by faith. And uh, we got in the car, and I, I, I was a little stressed, to be honest with you, and And uh, I found out something in that. When I'm a passenger in a car, I realize I get car sick. And it has nothing to do with motion sickness. It has to do with my control issues. Because I've realized when I'm out of control, like she had her hands on the wheel and and I had no control. I had no control. And and I'll be honest with you, I wasn't even worried. I I, I can honestly say I wasn't worried. If anybody's worried in our relationship, it's my wife. If we're going to put labels on people... My wife is more of the warrior, but I've realized there's another element to worry, which is called control. Control. Control and worry are really two sides of the same coin. And maybe there are some people that were watching this from the beginning. In the moment I talked about the art of not worrying, you instantly dismissed yourself from this sermon, thinking I'm not the kind of person who worries. Well, let me ask, uh, are you the kind of person who has control issues? Are you the person? I want to make sure I get everybody today. I want to make sure that I get your mom, I get your dad. I want to make sure I get your uncle who's watching from the back room, who may not really be watching, but is kind of half watching. I'm going to make sure I get everybody today in the art of not worrying. Are you, are you controlling? 
You see, worry, worry can come when things are out of control, but worry can also come from not being in control. In fact, maybe, maybe we could explore that tension today around this topic before we really get into training. I want to get into some training. I want to make sure I do the training element of what we're doing in this sermon, but I want to also make sure we teach well today because we're online. And, and I have found that, as I said earlier, to simply tell people to not worry, I mean, that's, that's not very helpful in certain situations. And often the same people who are accused of not worrying, they could also accuse people of not caring. That's the truth. That the people who feel like, hey, don't worry, they could just as easily turn back to you and say, you should care. You should actually care because sometimes we combine the two. And whether you call it worrying or you classify it as caring, there is actually a balance to it that is super, super important for us to find the finesse in this navigating this life and the pressures that come with it. Like, like I'm sure that there are some people online right now that really do need to worry less. I, I want to make sure I'm convinced. You are worried about everything. You are concerned about like any news that comes out, you, you're instantly worried. You are, you are the first person to go to worry. However, I'm also sure that those same people are convinced that the rest of us need to worry just a little bit more. Like we're too, a little too loose with our worry. A little too loose. Both are extremes ends of the same scale. For instance, I actually agree that, that carefree is a little scary. Anybody know what I'm talking about? The, the carefree person, those people who are blissfully ignorant to the severity of situations, and they're often way unprepared for life. You know, they're the kinds of people that right now are taking advantage of the $100 air flights to Europe. You're like carefree, like whatever. Like I'm going to go sometime, I'm going to go now. Well... That's a little too carefree for me. At the same time, on the other extreme are those who are careless. That's just as scary. They're, they're the people who really have a zero care factor and they're off, often creating way more chaos than is necessary because of their insensitivity or lack of care. So how do we find the balance? How do we find stability in every season? How do we be careful in every season, in every situation that life throws at us but without being worried? Well, I want to suggest that in Scripture today, Peter actually gives us some expert level training in the art of not worrying. Because in really all of Scripture and in this passage of Scripture, what we're going to find specifically, Peter is writing to several different churches that had real, real, a real reason for concern. Like they got real reason to be worried. The situations that were permeating the environment and the society that they were in, we find that gives them a certain reason for concern, And while some were certainly experiencing real persecution for their faith, others were simply living day to day under the threat of it. And I actually think, if I'm going to be honest with you, sometimes it's actually the anticipation or even the threat of suffering or something that can produce way more worry than the reality of it. Have you ever noticed that? That, that just the threat or just the anticipation just the, the premise, even the promise that things aren't going to go well, that can cause way more anxiety in, in you than the reality of the situation itself. And this is what we have in the church. This is why Peter feels it's high time that he teaches them something or really trains them how to not be so worried. And Peter's guidance to the church who were weighed down by worry is actually found in verse 7 that we just read. We're talking about Jesus. He says, Cast all your cares upon Him, for He cares for you. In fact, let's go ahead and back it up one verse, because before that He says first, humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time, He will lift you up in honour. In fact, let's quickly break that down, because it's kind of important to understand what's at the core of worry. And what's at the core of worry, believe it or not, is actually pride. Pride is actually at the center of worry. At its foundational element, I know this is going to offend some people because you're, you're thinking, yeah, I worry, but I'm certainly not prideful. Well, let me make sure I put this in perspective because this was also a personal revelation for Peter because if we were to unpack the personality trait of Peter, you're going to find that Peter would most, most definitely register as a six on the Enneagram scale. And for those who don't know 
Enneagram or what an Enneagram is, you just need to know that the Enneagram is really a, simply a, a personality definer that categorizes everybody between the numbers of one and nine. And wherever you fall on that scale really defines your personality. Now, I do not know enough about this stuff to get into an online seminar. And that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to bring you an online seminar about personality tests. You can do that in your own time, in your work from home bunker that you're in. You can, you can do your own Enneagram test. However, I do want to highlight a six, number six, because not only is Peter most probably a six, my wife is a strong six on the Enneagram scale. And what I've discovered about the six is the sixes are known as loyalists. They're loyal. They're loyal. In fact, most Enneagram coaches and teachers will actually suggest that, that there are more sixes than any other type in the world. That can be good in nice times, but when there is threat, there's bad. Because while they're loyal, they're also worried. They're also the ones to, to worry the most and, and see the danger in everything and see the terrorist in every, every, every tunnel. And so what we find is, is that sixes, however, despite the fact that sixes worry, we need sixes. Okay, you need to know that. We need sixes. If you were next to a six, just thank them. Just thank a six. We should, this should be National Prayer Day and Hug a Six Day, okay? Because we need sixes, because they're the ones that will ultimately help us make sure the world is preserved and that we're prepared when disaster strikes. That's what sixes do. Yeah, give it up for sixes right where you are. Sixes, thank you very much. Now, while Peter, however, was one of the most loyalist to Jesus, he also played the devil's advocate and seemed to worry more than, than the others. In fact, most scholars suggest, believe it or not, most scholars suggest that every time Jesus told the disciples not to fear, they believe he was looking at Peter. Like speaking to Peter, but just included everybody else. And Peter, who also had to deal with pride, not, not the kind of pride that you often think, not the pride of boasting, but, but the pride that comes with trying to do everything in your own strength. The kind of pride that only leans on you to solve every solution. That can be pride. And that kind of pride actually produces worry. Because if you find yourself in a situation that you can't solve, then you're actually into worry. And this is where pride actually is at the core of worry. However, Peter, Peter shares a secret for sixes. He says, the first thing you need to do if you're going to discover the art of worrying is you need to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. This is not just a prelude. This is an element. If you're going to have a formula for not worrying, the first thing you need to do is humble yourself. You need to get the revelation that God is able. You need to have that trust at your core. Instead of having pride that I've got this, have this trust that God's got it, that God can do it. God is able. And this may seem way too basic to too many believers, but is actually foundational when it comes to not worrying. To be fully persuaded that, that God can deliver me from any storm and any situation I find myself in, that I am convinced. This requires a unique and deep humility to know that even when I'm out of control, that don't mean God isn't. God's not out of control. God is in control. Even when the waves of life are crashing around me, God can in one moment speak and bring still and bring calm to the storm. Secondly, Peter does this. Peter says, cast your cares on Christ, for he cares. And for Peter, this sentence, it actually comes from experience. Peter actually speaks with full persuasion here because he's convinced of this. You see, the second part of that statement was not only questioned at one point, but also proven, for he cares, for he cares. You see, there's a situation the disciples were caught in one time. It's recorded in Mark chapter 4 where the disciples were out in the Sea of Galilee and there was a storm that was raging around them. And it was so violent that they thought they were gonna die. And in the midst of their freaking out, Jesus is asleep. Literally at the back of the boat, just sleeping. And it was perplexing to the disciples. They couldn't understand how in their last moments, Jesus was so peaceful, just sleeping. And they woke up to him and the Bible says in around verse 38 of Mark chapter four, it says that, that they wake him asking, Jesus, don't you even care that we're going to drown? And the Bible doesn't actually articulate which disciple it was specifically that said it, but I'm gonna with all confidence suggest that it was Peter. 
I, I, I may be taking some poetic license, but I've studied the characteristics of all the disciples. Thomas would have just doubted that they were going to make it, but he would have spoken up. Peter being the warrior would have been the one to say, don't you even care? Don't you care that we are going to drown? And I find that fascinating because despite Peter's natural tendency to worry, here we find him not only reminding the church in 1 Peter that Jesus does care after all, but also gives us a way not to worry by casting our cares on Him. And I believe that it's what we do with our cares that determines the level of worry in our life. It's what we do with our cares that determines, I want to say that again, it's what we do with our cares that determines the level of worry in our life. In fact, for all those that are still at home taking notes when no one's watching, I want you to write down this. When it comes to worry, are you carrying what you're meant to be casting? Can I frame that question again? When it comes to worry, are you carrying what you're meant to be casting? This is often a confronting question when we consider how weighed down we get by worry. Because truthfully, worry is actually, worry is like a weight. Did you know that? Worry is like a weight. That when you worry, you feel weighted. You feel weighted down by life. You feel heavy under the pressure of worry. Worry can literally be translated like a weight that is on you. And, and actually, I wonder if we're often overweight with worry. I mean, we spend so much time getting lighter, right? Getting fitter, going to the gym and making sure we're not overweight physically. But are you overweight spiritually? Not from eating too much good food, but the weight of worry. Like your soul is anchored. Like it's hard to, to process everything. It's hard to be agile. You're, you're worried about finances. You're worried about your kids. You're worried about a job promotion. You're, you're worried what people will think. You're worried about your age. You're worried about if you'll get married. You're wondering who you'll marry. You're worried about being worried too much. Worry will weigh you down and anchor your soul and lock you into a position where it produces so much weight that we end up carrying. And when you carry this kind of weight, it actually can be then difficult to have the strength to really, really, that's needed to reserve in reserve for when real problems happen. Because I'm already weighed down. The moment something else is added on, I crumble because I can't carry more weight. And I would actually argue that most believers, I'm not even including the rest of the world, the non-believers. I'm, 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 just, I'm just categorizing believers. I actually feel like believers are weighed down by worry. Even though we have the hope of our salvation, even though we have eternity in our hearts, I still think for some reason that believers are weighed down by worry because Peter talks about it. Yeah. And Peter is talking to the church. Peter is writing to you and I about the weight of worry. And if, if we were to illustrate this, and if we were to put worry on a scale, we would see that worry would essentially be weighing us down. This is what worry looks like. Worry is like in my life carrying weight. And it'd be nice if it was one weight. But what we often find is that if you live life a little bit, there's going to be lots of weights. There is family weight. Like how's my family doing? That, that's weight. That's worry. Especially if you're the provider. You worry about their provision and then you worry about can I can I provide? There's two worries in one right there. And then you're worried about a spouse and, and just getting the spouse is one worry. What about keeping the spouse is another? I feel like every worry compounds in our life. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree with me that, that there is a worry? And I want to make sure I frame this right because on the scale you have, you have us and you have him. Him being Jesus. That's what Peter says. Cast your cares upon Him. However, we end up carrying, I believe, what we're meant to be casting. And this is literally an illustration of, of your soul when you carry worry. This is literally what your soul looks like. Weighed down trying to be mobile in life when we're trying to be in a training series. I'm trying to get us agile. I'm trying to get us mobile. But sometimes we're trying to be agile and speak truth and life into our world, but yet we're limping because we're carrying worry on our left side. 
Stay with me because Peter wants to talk to this. And he understands and gives us some simple instructions. If you're worried, if you're weighed down by worry, he says, cast your care upon him for he cares for you. Cool. How? <laughs> like, like I, I love the illustration, but Peter, how? I mean, this is a great perspective. This is a really good articulation. In fact, when I picture this, I feel that's me. I look at this and I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm like, yeah, I do feel like, not like a gangster limp, but I just do feel like I've got like a, a weight limp. Every time I'm walking, I feel like I'm dragging the worries of the world. Even when I wake up in the morning, I feel like just to get out of bed, I got worry pulling me back in. I feel like I've got this weight that's holding me down and I'd love to get up, but I feel like the weight of the world was on me. And I love that, 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 that prescription there, uh, cast your cares on Christ. Like I'm just meant to. <laughs> and walk free. Like as if that is the, the way. And, and while this is prescriptive, it doesn't actually feel very descriptive. In fact, this, this causes me so much frustration as I was preparing this sermon. I like the verse, I love the premise that we can cast our cares on Christ, but, 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 but this is meant to be a training series. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like if this was just a teaching series, I could just talk about the revelation, but this is a training series, so I've got to give you application. And this was causing me so much frustration as I'm preparing this sermon, wondering how am I gonna, how am I gonna help people, God? Like, like I love that Peter just cast. Just, I mean, who even uses that word except fishermen, cast? Well, I guess Peter could because he was a fisherman. And maybe that was just in his vocabulary. Maybe just the word casting is just in the vocabulary or the common sentence of a fisherman. So I guess it makes sense for a fisherman to use that word. But who else other than fisherman? In fact, it reminds me there was this one time in Scripture where or actually the first time Peter met Jesus. And, and, and the Bible says that he was out fishing. And he came in and after fishing all night, Jesus said, go out to the deep and cast your nets. And, and, and before they didn't catch much fish, the next time they caught so much fish, the nets couldn't even contain it. And there's actually another time in Scripture after the resurrection of a similar occurrence. Peter was so dismayed. He, he was worried. Now, 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 I like that Jesus came to Peter both in moments of worry. Because on the first time, he'd been out fishing all night and caught nothing. Now, for a casual fisherman, that's no problem. That's probably a common occurrence. You go out fishing, didn't get anything, we'll try again tomorrow. But when you're a commercial fisherman, that's a big worry. That's a big problem because that's your livelihood. That's your provision. That's your economic stability. So being dejected on the shore when you've got no produce to take to the market, then that's a real problem. But in the midst of the worry, he comes to Peter. After the resurrection is a similar setting, but now he's not worried about catching fish. He's worried about denying Christ. And in the midst of that, we see in Scripture, he says this. In fact, it's so cool. Let me show it to you. John chapter 21, verse 3, it says, Simon Peter said to him, I'm going fishing. He said to the other disciples, I'm, just, I'm going fishing. That sounds like worry. And they said to him, we're, we're going with you also. And they went out and immediately got into the boat. And that night they caught nothing. But when the morning had come, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, children, have you any food? They answered him, no. And he said to them, cast the net on the other side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast, everyone's cast. Say cast, say cast. Even in your living room, say cast. Sorry, cast. So they cast. And now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. They, 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 they cast. They, they were fishing on one side and it wasn't working. So they cast on the other side, the, the right side. I actually wonder if Peter was being descriptive when it comes to the art of not worrying. See, see what, if, what if in the same way Jesus told Peter to cast on the other side, Peter is instructing us to do the same, to literally cast, to literally change the way we direct our worry because worry has to be moved somewhere. And like a fisherman who's casting by nature to the left side of the boat, 
Jesus said, would you try it? Because that ain't working. And I don't know if you're here today and you're wondering the same thing with me as you're listening to this sermon. And, and is my wondering really, my, my, sorry, my worry really working? Then, then maybe Jesus is speaking directly to you like he was to Peter and saying, would you just try casting things the other way? Like, like the pressure of being single, instead of you wearing that, would you just try it on the other side for a moment? Would you just try putting it on Jesus? And would, you, would you also take the, the worry of being single, just while you're at it, would you just take the worry of your weight off you? You know, just the fact that maybe you're not single material. Maybe you just take it off you and you being you, and maybe just trust that God has the right one for you. Maybe I could just pivot and I could shift the way I see it. And maybe I could take that financial pressure and know that, man, if God gave me these kids, why would He give me these kids to not let these kids be safe and secure? And maybe I could just shift some, some weight. And maybe, you know what I'm going to do also? I'm going to take the weight of the economy off me. I'm going to take the weight of the world off me. I'm going to take the weight of the corona. There's a heavy one, coronavirus, off me. And I'm going to literally do what Peter says, and I'm going to cast my cares on Christ. And this seems nice. This seems light. This seems refreshing. To have all my weight on Jesus, to have everything on Him, the weight of the worries, the weight of the world, for the government would be upon his shoulder. That's great. However, what's really frustrating is it still seems out of balance. Would you agree? It still seems out of balance. Am I meant to just be carefree in this world? Am I meant to have no concerns, no worries, no real awareness of what's happening in the world, not really having a part to play? And the truth is, while it is important to allow God to work for us, His ultimate desire is to work in us. In fact, God will take a worrying situation and in certain times, instead of removing it, He'll work through it. Did you know that? Did you know that God is able to work through every situation? The Bible says what the enemy planned for evil, God uses for good. So His ultimate plan is not just to remove everything from you, but to work in everything for you. And for that to happen, it means that God has to put some weight back on you. Now, truthfully, I gotta say this. It's only when we actually cast care that then we can take care. There is a process to this. You have to first cast care before you take care. And let, let me show you because Peter says this. He, he goes on to reveal something in the next few verses that is absolutely clutch in understanding how to, how to really have the, the art of not worrying and after talking about resisting the devil, standing firm in the faith, he says this in verse 10, he says, but may the God of all grace, who called us to His eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a little while, I love that. Not love the suffering, but love the fact that we all suffer. So my suffer isn't mean I'm weird or there's something wrong with me, but just to know that a whole brotherhood around the world experienced the same kind of suffering. He said, will He perfect establish, strengthen, and settle you. That one's my favorite, settle you. Check this out, check this out. You gotta see this from a holistic perspective and I'm running out of time, but I wanna make sure I bring this right into your living room. To settle you, the, the emphasis of this passage in Peter preaches to the church, it goes from you to God and now he's bringing it back to you. In other words, Peter first instructs us to cast our cares on Christ. And I love that. Then he says that in His grace, this is God, in His grace, through these cares or sufferings, the things that we navigate, the problems, the worries, and the issues of life, God is establishing you. God is perfecting you. In fact, God is strengthening you. How many people know that it requires some weight to get strength? That without resistance, nothing is developed, nothing is produced. And my favourite, he says God is settling 
you. And the reason that word is my favourite, because the moment I did a little study, because sometimes when you can't see it on the surface, you have to dig deeper. How many people know what I'm talking about? Like, like when you can't see the revelation on the, on the surface, it doesn't mean it's not there. It's just an invitation for you to dig, for you to actually study. And what I realised is this word, out of all the words, the word settle in the original language literally means that, that it goes, it talks about a balance under weight that when something settles like a foundation, its own weight is what balances everything out. And I love that word that God is wanting to say, after you cast your cares on Him, after I give God my worry, after I give God my concerns, once I cast care, then I can take care and God is wanting to settle us. I love that notion. I love the notion of believers not being worried, not being this way, this way, that way, but but just being settled, being steadfast, having a firm foundation, being strong, having a robustness to their life. And He says that God in His grace, so it's a grace. It's not God in His vindictive nature like He has one. He doesn't have one. God in His kindness, God in His favour, God in His grace will settle you or balance you under your own weight. However, which worries do I take? That's a question. If I'm going to cast care, then take care. Which cares do I take? Let me put it this way, which cares do I cast and which cares do I carry? Well, it depends. I would think on what you can and can't control. Can we come back to control for a moment? For me, this is a battle. I'm not so much of a kind of person who worries, but, but what is and what isn't in my control troubles me. Like with my daughter yesterday, she had both hands on the wheel, but I had one hand on the, the shifting gear shifting thing because... At any moment's notice, I needed some control. In fact, I think that's a good coach to not just give license to do anything, but to still have some control. If I needed to, I was gonna just shove that into neutral or shove that into park, depending on what was coming. And I feel like this is what God, He wants your hand on it too. He's, in, he's into partnership. God's into partnership. He wants to grow you under the weight and to settle under the weight. So what if I was to give God control of what I can't control and allow Him to give me control of what I can. You see, I may not be able to control my circumstances, but I could, yeah, this is a big one. I could certainly control my emotions. That's under my control. I can't change the setting, but I can change my emotions. I I, I may not be able to to change my fears, so I got to give them to God, but I'm wondering if I can control my confessions. Because while they're fears, I can give them to God, but if I can hold my confession and profess my faith, maybe that's within my control. And and, and maybe I might not be able to change my, my, my friends and my influences around me, but maybe I can't even control the coronavirus. I'm gonna leave that over there, but, but I can control my conversations. And when you actually start to see the way that God works in your life. I've got to make sure I balance this right for the sake of the illustration. Let's put that just on our side. No, let's put that there. God will give us some weight. God, He will help us. He will take the worries that we can't handle, but He will start to slide some weight in our world so that we will, under the weight, settle. That we, oh, this, this needs a maturity to really understand that, that under the weight of cares, giving our worries to Christ, casting all our cares on Christ for He cares, cast them to Him. But then God will allow us as we cast to carry some because under the weight, we won't worry, but we'll be settled. We'll be steadfast. We'll have a firm foundation built upon the rock of Jesus Christ, steadfast in the faith, having a fortitude, not just a faith to start, but a fortitude to finish, having a firm foundation. See, this is the art of not worrying. This is the art of not worrying, to to know that there is a, 
a balance or a finesse to this thing. It's a partnership with God. You see, what's interesting to me, the first time Peter cast his nets, after Jesus said, cast your nets on the other side, he tried to bring them in, but they broke. He couldn't handle it. The second time he told him to cast his nets, it says they could hardly pull it in, but the nets didn't break. You know, when you go for a season with God, God will change you into a way that the weight you couldn't carry before, now you can. God will build a robustness to your life where you can carry weight that you couldn't before, but because of faith in Jesus and because of walking through Him and because of maturity, man, I gotta tell you, you know what? I gotta, I gotta, I gotta make sure I say this. There's so many conversations out there right now about no fear, faith. I love that conversation. But I want us to elevate the conversation because with that conversation, faith over fear comes wisdom over stupidity. And we've got to walk in wisdom. We walk by faith, but we walk with wisdom. I love what 2 Timothy, it says this, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love that faith, love and a sound mind that there is a wisdom to the way we walk in this world. And what God wants you to have wisdom is, is to see that He will take the weight of the world off you. But let me put some weight back on you so that there is a stability to your life because God's plan is that people would get their weight and their worth off what you speak. As you begin to speak the Word of God, as you walk with finesse, it will be a wonder to them how you can be in the situation and not be worried. How can I have the peace that surpasses all understanding because I cast my cares on Christ and because of the weight of anointing from Him, I walk with it. I carry it. God is strengthening you and He is settling you today. I'm wondering right now how God is speaking to you through this Word. I'm wondering what God is revealing to you about the way you work and the way you walk and what you've been carrying the weight. I would love to have a moment right across the world right now where we cast our cares on Christ, where we literally shift it from doing it the way we've been doing it. And we say, God, I need you to take it. And it happens through prayer. That's how you cast. You say, God, I give it to you. I let go. I relinquish the worry of this. So would you, right where you are right now, every location, just go ahead and close your eyes. Every single person under the sound of my voice, on a mobile device, on a computer screen, on a television, Right now, God, we pray, Lord, that the weight of the world, the weight of worry, I'm speaking to those who are carrying anxiety, even those who have been diagnosed with depression. God, we recognise we've been carrying the weight wrong. So God, by Your grace, we shift it to You right now. The things we cannot control, God, we give to You. And by Your grace, we take the mandate to carry what we can control. We take the responsibilities of our conversations, our emotions, our actions, our faith. God, we take the responsibility of that. And Lord, under that weight, would we be settled as Your people? Would we be steadfast as Your people? Would we be secure as Your people? Not worried about the different changes of settings and seasons in our life, but strong in the faith, bold in the faith, confident in Christ Jesus.